Hi, everybody. It is episode 532 of PodQuest. Hey. It is Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. I am Chris, and the other person here is Walnut. Yeah, it's just us. Druton is in Chicago? Yeah, he's in the Bean City or whatever it is. The City of the Bean. Something about a bean. There's a big metal bean there, so. Yeah. You also, I just noticed, you sound surprisingly low. Do I? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm maybe a little bit further away from the um from the mic. You're on the right oh. right input. No, I'm not. There we go. Hey. Now, now I'm in the right input. It'll be fine. You guys will catch that. Keep it all live. We'll do this live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna redo it. Redo that whole intro. Um. No. You should have said something in the ten minutes that we talked before recording. So you know what it was? I had um before we started, I had messed with my headset and I thought I just thought it was my headset. And I'm like, you still sound low and I like raised the volume. I'm like, no, that didn't help. Mm-hmm. Um so weird. It, it is what it is. No, it's it's, right. it's fixed. Yeah. You know? We're we're flying by the seat of our pants. No one knows what's going on. Look, look, we do this we've been doing this for like ten years or whatever. We still don't know what's going on. Like we still we still mess up. It's fine. It happens. Yeah. Technology changes. Yeah. And you're over here with two different types of uh, microphone inputs. Yeah, well, yeah, because, I mean, I have my gaming headset, which when I'm generally when I'm on, uh, uh, wait, oh, no. Does that mean that when we recorded Brose, it was using that input the whole time? Oh, how do you, how yeah, do you record know. Brose? Uh, we record, the, uh, we recorded our final episode. I was going to um, say, you, you haven't actually done one in a while, have you? Yeah, we recorded our final, like, our goodbye episode. Um, Chase, what do you got? He was chewing on something. Uh, but yeah, we recorded our final episode, and so we we just basically, every time we went to record, we would make a new um, email address and do Zencaster. And then we would, re- but we would use the uh, uh, voice thing. We would hear each other's audio through Discord. Um, cause we would do a video call. And so I know, I'm pretty sure Zencaster was on, um, was on the CAD, but I think Discord was on the, uh, the other mic. Which is fine. That's just what everybody else, yeah. that's what, what the people that you're recording with hears. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Um, yeah. unless that I do, I don't think I did any, anything on Sunday that required, cause that was, well, that was Friday night and then Saturday. Yeah. No, I don't. Whatever. I don't know. I guess I did that on Discord. Whatever. It happens. Yeah. It's not the end uh, of the world. Yeah. No, I don't know what's going on anymore. What, what's on Uh-oh. the agenda? On the agenda, Cobb, you went to this uh, little indie convention called uh, like New York Comic Convention. Um, I we I have a little bit of like a discussion topic sort of thing. Not really, but um, Critical Role celebrating their 10th anniversary, and they are doing a quote world tour. They have five live live shows. Scheduled, and I want to talk about one of them. And I just I saw, well, well, there will be some spoilers about Critical Role uh, and stuff like that as we discuss. Um, but we'll talk about that for a bit. And then uh, I uh, beat Callisto Protocol and am playing Callisto Protocol, the former, also known as Dead Space. So we're going to talk about those a little. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe, maybe since there's going to be some Critical Role spoilers, we'll swap those two. Maybe. And, uh, have, yeah. that go- have the Critical Role stuff at the end. We'll yeah, see. we'll do the we'll do the critical role stuff at the end. We'll talk about Clues Protocol first. Yeah. Uh but before all of that, I did attend New York Comic Con twenty twenty four. Yes. Um it had a, there were a lot of people. Yes. Who who'd have thunk it? Yes. Um oh. you were you were there what, Friday and Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I went up by myself on Friday and was there most of the day. I left around four. Um and then Erica and I went up on Sunday and we left at like three which it it shuts down at five on sunday so Mm -hmm. um sunday was significantly more crowded than friday shocker Um, actually i am i am terrified what saturday must have looked like Uh, apparently all four days were pretty nuts um one of our friends like tables there um in artist alley and we were talking to him and he's like i can't imagine what the rest of the show looks like like it's been bonkers since thursday yeah yeah it's i I think that convention's really good, but I also think it's the the space they have is not big enough for it. But it's New York; you're not really going to find much bigger space unless you go to like Madison Square Garden type stuff. Yeah, and that's Eric and I were talking about that on the the way like to the train and everything. That 
the the space they have is not big enough for the amount of people that they sell tickets to mm-hmm. um and not and not for how they have things laid out like there are two halls downstairs that are basically empty all weekend because they're the autograph hall and the um like the queue hall for like some of the yeah. panels and it's like 90% of the time those those places are pretty empty um there's no reason they couldn't move them elsewhere in the convention center and maybe do like part of the expo floor in one of them and part of and like split artist alley yeah like, like they they have that entire what three or four floors of like conference rooms that they could turn that stuff into like the the signature hall and stuff like that like that the, the stuff downstairs they definitely could definitely extend the expo hall to downstairs for sure like that is that was my thing when i was there a few years ago it was like i didn't really want to explore the expo hall that much because it did get so crowded yeah and it, it's tough to get around that floor especially like on saturday and sunday um parts of it are open parts of it are way too um constrictive and they tend to just where they decide to put things oftentimes makes no sense like they'll put booths that sell food in like back corners yeah. where there's going to be lines it's it gets congested back there and then there are six to eight ta- like booths that you just can't go to at all because there's always like too many people staying there trying to get food mm-hmm. um and then you have like these other booths that run like these things that involve lines which the booths try to do the best they can with like managing those but they they always get out of hand and they're just blocking everything up like yeah yeah like the, the when I was there, they had the um the Funko booth that was like a big haunted house or something, something like that. Honestly, like something that's like a big event type booth. Not and I'm not saying like like the, the Funimation booth and stuff, but like something like Funko probably could be put downstairs where like that lines up and you have a big area and this thing takes up so much space and you can't really get around it. Yeah, yeah, like that. They, they there are other ways that they could a hundred percent go about it. And mm-hmm. even Artist Alley, like, Artist Alley is long, but you have, the, particularly the back sections, like, the, it's, like, the the last set of tables in the back, um, in, like, the, the th- three or four middle rows are all the um, comic sketch artist area. Yeah. So, the, that's, like, comic sketch art is, like, the, the company that brings the, the creators in, um, that's a lot of the bigger named like comic creators sit back there. Um, yeah, they end up with massive lines that then make it fucking impossible to navigate anything in the, that area. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, like in a lot of cases, like if you're back there, you're probably looking to get in one of those lines. But at the same time, there are a bunch of other people there with comic sketch art that don't draw in big lines that you're basically unable to go look at what they have. Or, like, talk to them or, like, get a book signed. And, like, that sucks. And it, like, sometimes they try and, they try and, like, think about it ahead of time. Like, last year, so last year, um, the current creative team on Batman was there. And they were actually there again this year and in the same spot. And they had them, they had them at a table together um, at the end of a unit. And off to the side of them, they had, like, a big open area that they used as, like, a queue. So they, they kept, like, the aisles kind of as clear as possible. Um, mm-hmm. But then you have other people that are, like, popular. There's no guessing that they're popular. Um, it's not like, a, oh, we didn't expect a bunch of people to turn out for this person. They're just, like, in the middle of the fucking aisle. And it's like, whose idea was this? Like, yeah. y- you are making it hard for everybody else this way. Yeah. Um, the the only one that I could see being a little bit of a wild card was Timothy Zahn was there with them. Who, he is a science fiction writer primarily. And he is very well known for doing Star Wars uh, expanded universe books, like novels. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, you know, Thrawn, right? Yeah. Um, He's the guy that created Thrawn in in the 90s. Um, He was he I've never seen him at at this convention before. He was there and he wasn't on an end like at the end. He actually know he may have been at the end of a booth, but they didn't do any like line stuff for him ahead of time. So, like, on Friday, the line was outrageous. Um, Sunday, when we got there, they had at least, like, tried to organize it better. But, like, they didn't They didn't do it ahead of time. So, like, they were just scrambling to try and, like, get something to work. And, like, mm-hmm. that's a fucking bummer. Um, complaints aside, though, I do have fun. I did have fun. Like, 
there was some cool stuff to see on the show floor, a lot of cool like arts and, and things down in Artist Alley. Um, on Friday, I went to an IDW panel, um, and they just they gave away a bunch of free shit. Like every every single chair in there had like a little notebook, um, a hat, and a lanyard with their new logo on it. Nice. Um, and then the panel was them kind of like going over like some of the stuff they have like planned for like the near future and beyond. Um, mm-hmm. Something of interest to you, they have a ton of Godzilla stuff in the works. Nice. Including the first ever Mothra series. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it's It actually sounds, it sounds like it could be kind of cool. Um, Just FYI. Although, yes, Godzilla and Mothra tend to coincide with each other. Mothra is its own thing, and Mothra was its own thing before it became a thing with Godzilla. I know that. We've talked about that yeah. before. I'm just, like, they have a lot of Godzilla and also Mothra. Because mm. um, they, they have, like, license deals with a lot of different stuff. Um, I want to say they have, like, three or four different Godzilla books that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this Mothra one is Mothra gets killed in the beginning of it um, by, like, whatever the monster is. And these two, like, these twins or something like that have to go back in time to find baby Mothra and raise her to go beat the the monster in the future so it's like terminator mothra yeah and it sounds yeah. so dumb but i like i'm i'm almost that, interested enough to buy that's, it that's a mothra story though like there every any time i've watched a, a godzilla movie we've talked about this anytime i watch a godzilla movie where mothra was one of the main focuses meaning like mothra wasn't necessarily a villain but mothra was a hero it tended to revolve around the fact that there are these twins that controlled her yeah um and yeah so that sounds exactly like just a mother i hated them because they always sang and they gave me a headache even so like least, as, as a this kid this is at least a comic gave, book yes they're still gonna sing but probably won't give me a headache yeah um but yes yeah, so they, they have that coming up they they also announced um they're leaning into like horror more mm-hmm. um because like they they were the studio that did the original um uh 30 days of night that became like the vampire movie Okay. Um, so th- they have a bunch of original stuff that they're working on, including one book that just came out called Exorcism at 1600 Pen, which is about like somebody who, who gets elected president, and then they have to have an exorcism performed at the fucking White House. Interesting. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I'm going to buy that one because it actually just sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then they have a bunch of license deals with like different things to create comics based on some of these horror properties so like they're they're doing a new run of 30 days of night um they're doing something with event horizon with sleepy hollow um the the movie not the show from the sound of it uh and i'm drawing a blank on some of the others saw maybe i don't know it it, it was all paramount related stuff because that their deal was with paramount Mm -hmm. um but it was actually pretty cool like i'm looking forward to seeing what some of these horror comics are that they, they come out with because um, usually, like, IDW stuff's usually pretty high quality. It's just a lot of it I'm not all that interested in. Like, they do, like, they're t- I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff. Um, they do, like, Transformers and G.I. Joe, which just really aren't my thing. Um, I used to actually really like their um, their Ghostbusters runs that they did. I just haven't really picked any of those up in a long time. Um, and then they, they do, a, like, Star Trek and things like that off to the side, too. Um so, but, like, I'm probably going to check out some of these horror ones as they start coming out in the next, like, six months to a year. Mm-hmm. So that should that should be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Um, yeah. I like otherwise, like, Friday was a lot of just, like, wandering around, looking at stuff. Um, I did not buy anything at all this this weekend. Erica did. Erica bought quite a bit of things. But I, I was just kind of checking stuff out. Um, excuse me. Nothing on the show floor really, like, jumped out at me as, like, oh, I need to have that. Um Lots of cool stuff that people make. Um, I really like, I don't know if you ever noticed, we have like a one piece wood thing in our living room that it's like the crew like on like colored wood. Mm-hmm. Um, the the table that, that sells those things was there. And it's always cool to go through and like see what new stuff they have because um, they don't, it's not paint. It's all like the natural stain of the wood that they bring out. Yeah. Um, so they get all these like vibrant colors just out of the wood itself. And they do, like, scenes from different anime and video games. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I always have fun, like, going by and, like, seeing what crazy stuff they've done. And it's it's always really cool looking. Um, 
Sunday, what did I do on Sunday? I only went to one panel on Sunday again. Um, I went to the Marvel panel. Well, it was the Spider-Man panel. So um, it was, what was it called? Spider-Man and his Venomous Friends is what it was called. Um, so it, it was a split between upcoming Spider-Man stuff and upcoming Venom stuff because they've been pushing Venom really hard the last few years. Um, mm-hmm. And the the one cool thing that they announced that I'm actually kind of looking forward to is there's a new Carnage book coming out, which usually isn't my thing because I, I find Carnage kind of boring, especially when it's his own book because, frankly, they've overdone him the last few years. Um, but in this one, it's going to be Eddie Brock is going to be Carnage, and he has never been Carnage before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm interested to see how that goes because in the last like decade or so, like Eddie has become more hero than villain. Yeah. And like back in like the nineties, like you had Venom lethal protector where like he was kind of doing like the Punisher, like anti-hero sort of thing where he generally was only killing bad people and then, and then fighting Spider-Man, but only mm-hmm. killing bad people. Um, but like in, in more recent years, he's definitely like between the symbiote, bonding with other people like flash thompson um he's gotten just more like on the side of good entirely still can be a little violent but generally like a good guy um carnage is just completely fucking broken like the only way for carnage to exist is to kill so they were talking about how um eddie has to kind of like make a deal with with the carnage symbiote to allow it to kill but to only allow it to kill killers so, like, that whole, like, serial killer killing serial killers, like Dexter. Um, but they were talking about it, and it's basically like a drug for Carnage. So, every kill is going to make him need a bigger kill. So, like, re- just, like, people aren't going to be good enough. It's going to have to be supervillains. And then, what do you go for, like, after a supervillain? And uh, the editor talking about it, it's like, we don't really have it planned out super far yet. But if you think about it, like, at a certain point, like, Galactus is technically a universal serial killer like that guy has obliterated just un uncountable worlds in the marvel universe like will they write a story where carnage tries to fucking eat uh galactus maybe um so i'm looking forward to that some of the other spider-man stuff seems all right um there was so the way they do that panel is like they, they do all the panel stuff the announcements they have people come up to talk about stuff which is always cool um and then they do like a q and a and, like, there was w- this one dude got up, very first question, and, like, he was such a, like, douche about it. Like, he was basically just, like, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But he's, like, why do you guys suck so much and treat women shitty? And then, like, wouldn't listen to, like, the editor trying to, like, have a conversation with him about it. Like, just kept, like, repeating the same thing over and over again. And then when the editor was finally just, like, all right, great. Like, thanks for coming. Like, like we have a lot of people to get to. He still refused to like sit down or like move move on. And it's like, yes, like, like ask ask your question. Like, tr- try and have like a conversation about it. Don't just be a dick though. And that's all he was doing was being a dick. And it's like, yeah, well, I I don't I don't know the ins and out of the comic industry. I didn't know that there was an issue with Marvel execs specifically no, 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 Spider Man no, 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 treating no, women shitty. No, 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 no. no. Not real women, comic book characters. Not human people, fictional characters. What's he trying to say? That they write them poorly or that... Yeah, that they write them poorly, that they're not given the right chances, that they're... that He, he, he used the term fridging them, which I... Are you familiar with that term? No. So fr- fridging in comics and, and a lot of media um, is a reference to a Green Lantern comic from the 90s. Uh, where uh, Kyle something or other, I forget what his name actually was. Um, he he was the Green Lantern at the time, and he came home one day and found his girlfriend murdered and shoved into their fridge. Okay. Um, she was killed off panel and for no reason except to push the hero forward. Mm-hmm. Like th- there was no story reason for killing her except for like an emotional blow to the hero. Um, so a lot of times if if a the character, specifically a female character, is killed in a just non-eventful, like, non-impactful way that's really just meant to amplify the hero. They call it fridging. Um, so he, he used that to describe Miss Marvel um, because she died in a Spider-Man comic and then was brought back two months later. Um, to which the editor was like, she was in that book for two years. 
Like, it's not like she just appeared once and was killed, and she died protecting the city. Like, she didn't just, like, die for Spider-Man. She didn't, like, get killed off panel. It wasn't, like, a random, like, she fell off a building and died. Like, she sacrificed herself knowing she would die to save the city. And the guy's like, well, she was only on 25 pages. And it's like, what? Like, hey, it's a fictional fucking character guy. Like, <laughs> is... Is this guy just mad because he's, because he doesn't get to see more boobs in his Spider-Man comic? Fucking maybe. And like he looked like he was in his 50s. This is this is part of my reason why like and I went over this when we went to Baltimore Comic Con that many years ago for the Stan Lee thing and like why I try to stay away from Q&A sort of um uh panels because people will will ask the most ridiculous stupid things like now look if there is a an issue in comics and writing where they maybe don't give women the respect they should in that writing for one reason or another i don't read comics so i don't know but if there is a legitimate issue then yes that needs to be approached but approaching it by trying to make that viral moment come out which is totally what this guy was trying to do absolutely get a viral moment to come out so he could go viral on the internet that's not the way you approach this yeah and look there there is absolutely an issue with just male gaze in comics like and frankly in most media yeah excuse me like that's a thing um more in more modern comics comics you do at least get it both ways a little bit more depending on the creative team um like there there's a lot of like horny jokes made at the expense of Nightwing um in recent years. Mm-hmm. And like they're they're meant as jokes, but also like I can understand why like doing that to a guy doesn't hit the same way as them doing it to a female character because historically f- women in the real world gets treated like that too. So like yeah. it's less fictional. Um but yeah, like like doing it the way that he did it is not the right way and like the stuff he was calling out like just didn't feel valid in any way shape or form like calling out like like the just the blatant sexism in like cover design sure like there is no reason that like the women need to be depicted the way they are in covers on like particularly on solo books like the like the books where like women are like the solo like character on it Mm -hmm. oftentimes like they're drawn a little too like provocative um and if it's not the main cover it's like a variant cover and, like, I get it, like, sex sells, but, like, that's a thing to argue about. Not when a character died and then came back two months later. Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. This is, this is why I've, uh, I've, I've been asked, like, what's, what's an opinion that, you know, that, that's, like, opposite of what people would think about you, or you would think you think? And my opinion is nerds suck. Yeah. They do. Like, nerds are the worst. Yeah, for 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 people who often complained about being like ostracized and isolated, like they tend to ostracize and isolate people. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll never I'll never forget being in college. I'm walking around with my bleach Hitsugaya backpack. I needed to get some surveys filled out for a journalism class or something, and so I like I set up a couple of computers um there with the survey and i go up to them and i'm like hey god there's a bunch of kids that bring a like fucking gamecube and play smash bros during their lunch hour or whatever two lunch two hour lunches and i'm like hey guys how you doing just wonder if you guys could all do me a huge favor i have to fill out the survey for one of my courses could like some of you i just need to get 10 of you to come fill out this survey and they all just stared at me that's it they didn't say yeah or no they just stared at me I mean, and th- that is also partially, like, so- social awkwardness. Um, yeah. But, like, but, at like, the same time, like, yeah, I'm, they could they could have just I'm, said, no, sorry. I'm one of you. Like, just come fill this out real quick. Uh, So I ended up just cheating on that project by filling it out ten times on separate computers. And <laughs> I just did it myself. Nice. This way, in, this way in case it tracked IP addresses or whatever. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I mean, just, you could have you also just released and renewed your IP address a bunch. Yeah, but I just, I went in and I was just like, all right. And I just did different answers for each one. Who cares what the actual sample size of this project was? It meant nothing. I, I It might have been published on, like, the website or something like that. But who cares? 
It's not like yeah. it was real, real reporting. But yeah, nerds are just nerds are the worst. Yeah, and like there are plenty of them that that aren't. Like I have, I have on more than one occasion like had good experiences with strangers at like conventions, like waiting in line for something. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, there are just as many people that just suck that are just and like especially at, at something like New York Comic Con where like there are so many people and ninety percent of them seem to just be super inconsiderate. Yeah. Like, the amount of times that people just stop dead in an aisle to have conversations, and, like, they're not just talking to one person, they're talking as a group, and there's, like, six of them, and they all stand in a circle. It's like, you're literally blocking the entire path doing this. Like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> that was, um, I, I, like, I'll never forget this at Baltimore Comic Con, uh, when we went that many years ago. Like, I met up with friends of mine that had gone down there, and we were going to an artist so that they could get their, a comic or something signed. And we're sitting at the, like, in line. And this dude has a rolling suitcase worth of comics that he's trying to get signed that weekend. And he's oh, he opens up his suitcase to try to find the few comics or whatever. And he finishes that up. And he, he, like, zips it up. And it was, like, one of those ones that you have to, like, lay down flat. And then it, the panel opens. Like, he sets it up. He, he picks it up. And then it falls and topples over onto my friend. And he looks at her and gets mad at her as if it was her fault. And then pulls it and doesn't even say, like, oh, I'm sorry, and like or anything. Like, just, like, yeah. gives her this look. And it's like, it's all right, yeah, dude. I, don't worry yeah. about it. In my experience, the people that bring carts with comics are usually assholes. Yeah. Um, who, ju- who literally have no consideration for anybody else at the convention. Yeah. Um, well, and, like... That's not to say that, like, everyone is like that either. Like I said, like, there are plenty of people that are there just trying to have a good time. Like, you say excuse me to them. They try to get out of your way as best they can. Like, yeah. most people are understanding, like, I got bumped a few times and people generally, like, turn around and, like, apologize. Like, I'm just like, it's fine. Like, it, there's very little room here. Like, I get it. Like, you got to kind of, like, squeeze by where you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I generally, like, I still enjoy it. But, like, I enjoy, like, the Friday more than the weekends because it is just easier to get around. Um, the problem is like, there are less things to go do on Friday generally than like Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday generally have panels and stuff that are a little more interesting. Um, yeah. and like, the, honestly, like there were like a couple of years there where like the panels really just sucked. Like they just didn't have much going on. And this is one of the first years where I'm just like, okay, no, like these are actually like worth going to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to make like some cuts because like, unfortunately a bunch of them all happened at the same time. So like there was that IDW one I went to, there was like one panel that started like 20 minutes or 30 minutes before it one that was running around the same time and then one that started like half an hour after it and i'm like well i can only go to one of these and i just kind of like picked the one that sounded the most interesting but yeah overall i had a good time um i i'll go again next year like assuming assuming i can get tickets for it i will continue to go yeah i i would love to start going to more conventions specifically like new york comic con and other stuff locally but i just it's hard for me to go to conventions right now still. So. And, like, frankly, New York Comic Con is super expensive. It's, thir- like, it's 40 bucks to take the train, um, yeah. plus the cost of the ticket, plus food, because that shit's expensive. Yeah. Um, like, th- there are some hurdles to doing it um, that, like, is understandable if you can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that said, how about you talk a little bit about Callisto Protocol and Dead Space? Yeah, so uh, for those of you who don't know the connection between these two, Callisto Protocol was made by the same like writer or director, art director or something. Lens was made, yeah, he was made by the same guy who did Dead Space. So it's basically, you can argue that it's like sort of a spiritual successor, but it's it's not an actual successor because he it's not with EA. It's with a different company. Um the game overall, it was good. It was fun. It was linear. It was very linear, straightforward. It wasn't survival horror in the sense of like uh, Silent Hill or Resident Evil or Dead Space. It was survival horror in a sense of like a limited inventory space and more, probably more so like Doom, I think is what you guys were comparing it to. That's what it or, sounded like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but like it wasn't like the, the heavy, like, combat heavy style game it it was just straightforward you go from level to level to level to level and like which is nice it's refreshing you don't see a lot of level based games anymore i know i said this last week um i at the time of recording last week i was probably about four to five hours in i had not fought a single boss at that time i played on sunday for four and a half hours and i fought 
technically five bosses. Jeez. <laughs> technically, uh, I mean, well, they two they they I guess you could say two boss, two, three, four. Technically four, but maybe you can argue five because what it was was the boss that you encounter halfway into the game is this two headed creature that you have to fight. You have to knock it down, then you rip its head off and then you fight him when he only has one head and you knock it down and then you kill it um you can in- you encounter three of those guys and the first time first and second time they make it like into an encounter the third time he's just there and you don't i don't know if you necessarily have to fight him but i ended up fighting him because i had a plethora of ammo and and whatnot um the second to last boss you fight is the base form of the final boss it's just this this human that is infected with the the disease, uh, but has all of his mental faculties and is just a stronger human. Um, the boss fights were incredibly boring. Oh, that's for a them. Yes, because all they are, the combat system is really neat. You, if an enemy runs up to you, you hold left or you hold right. They'll auto dodge depending on the direction you're holding. Um, and then, like, if you can dodge each hit. It'll then give you a chance and opportunity to re- respond with a, a melee attack. And then if you hit them enough with the melee attack, it'll give you like a r- little reticle will pop up uh, on the enemy. You pull out your gun and it auto aims at whatever point that it that it's at. And you can shoot him once or twice. Um, that's all the boss fights ended up being is dodge, 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 attack them, shoot them, dodge, 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 attack, shoot. They have... All of these, like, different features, and they have, like, the stun feature, like, the paralysis, the stasis feature, like they did in Dead Space. They have the grab and re- the re- grab and throw feature, like they do in Dead Space. And for the most part, you, you don't have as much of an opening to run around the stages, especially with the first and first, fourth, first, third, fourth, and fifth, halfway through the fifth, half of the fifth boss, final boss. Do you really have area to run and grab things and toss them at him? No, you just kind of sit there, dodge, 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 attack, dodge, 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 attack. And it's just monotonous and boring. Um, And then the final boss is a two-phase boss, which is, I mean, it's a survival horror game and it's a, it's a video game. The final boss is going to be multiple phases. Right. Where, where luckily, if you die during the second phase, they bring you back on the second phase. And that second phase was a pain in the ass, which actually opened up the arena, and you could run around, but the boss will kill you in one hit, which is bullshit. Like, you could have the max health, you could be filled up in health and everything, but if the boss hits you with one specific attack, one hit KO, no matter how high your health is. And so then that's where you have to be running around, and you have to find, like, I was running out of ammo. It took me several tries. I was running out of ammo. Uh, I couldn't find things to toss at the enemy. And what you have to do is you have to hit the enemy in the head a few times and its shell will break apart. And then you hit him actually in the head head and then eventually he'll stagger. Um, But it's all range combat. There's not really a lot of melee combat you can do against this boss because he's a big giant boss. Um, And you can't turn around that fast. So if the boss charges you and you can't get away, he's going to kill you in one hit. So I ended up like jumping jumping across different, like, not platforms, but, like, jumping over walls, and that was, like, the easiest way to dodge him. Or if you just face the boss and then hold the directional pad left or right, when he goes to swing at you, you'll dodge, and then, boom, you can run away. Um, I died a few times because I would get caught in animations, and then explosive enemies would come out and blow up, and that would kill me in the middle of the animation. (laughs) Um, Stuff like that. But yeah, like that boss was annoying. The other bosses were boring. That boss kind of sucked. And I was just like, the game was great until I had to fight the bosses. Um, And then like the game was kind of left open. Like there could be a sequel, but they're not going to get a sequel because it didn't do very well. So they did a DLC, but it's $14, $15 for two hours. I don't care. I'm not going to do that. I didn't realize the DLC was so short. Yeah, it's like two to three hours. Uh, and like, there's a bunch of DLC to the game, like different, like cosmetic packs and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care enough to like, maybe if it's ever sub five dollars, but I don't really care that that much to to get the end point of this character story of the main character story. Um, 
the, but yeah, it was it was good. It was fun for the most part. It was fun. It it had decent atmosphere, but like. I've only I've been into Dead Space now for three hours, and I've been more scared the entire time playing Dead Space than I ever was playing Callisto Protocol. That game is atmospheric and scre and creepy as hell and spooky, and I love it. I'm loving and hating every single moment of this game. So at least you finally found one you like, because it seems like Alien Isolation was a big miss. Callisto Protocol was fine. I- I liked it. It was fun. It just, yeah, like the end kind of just sucked. That's what um, I'm saying. Like, like yeah. it was fine. Like, like it's it doesn't seem like it's a game that you you're interested in ever going back to. Yeah, and then Dead Space. Yeah, it was. It was no like it. It's no wonder they made they did a remake. No wonder it got a sequel. It was. It it's great. It's so good. Um, and like it is true to the idea of survival horror, where like you get things later on that you can go back to areas to. They have the whole progression system with upgrading your armor and equipment with, with items you find. You get money to buy credit. To, you get credits to upgrade your weapons and stuff like that. And, like, I guess one thing that kind of bothered me in Callisto Protocol, and I know I'm jumping back and forth a bit, one thing that kind of really bothered me in Callisto Protocol is you didn't really need to, you didn't, they, you, I only got three weapons. There's five total. But I only got three of them because you need to buy the uh, the middle two. Uh, but if you bought the middle two, that takes away inventory space that you have very limited to have because there's only 12 inventory sp- slots. It takes away inventory space because each of them have separate, separate ammo capacities or separate ammo types. And so I'm like, man, I didn't really get to try out any of the other weapons. And there's no like box to put anything in if you don't want to use one of the weapons. So you're just kind of... SOL. Now, granted, by the end of the game, I had three of five weapons, and I... Was it three of... Was it five? Yeah, I had three of five weapons, and I generally had about three or... I had four or five inventory slots taken up for all the different ammo types. So yeah, I could have technically just had all the weapons and just had one inventory slot per, per ammo type, but it's still like... That game had such limited inventory... It didn't give you your shops and crafting stations often enough. And it, it also, there was no map. So I couldn't even tell if I was missing stuff because I couldn't look at a map. So, or Dead Space has all that. It has an inventory box where if you have too much ammo, you can put it away. Uh, Callisto Protocol has it to where if you, uh, if, if, or, or Dead Space has it to where if you want to open up a map and see what's around, you can open up a map. It, it, ha- it tells you where you're going. It has a thing that'll tell you where you need to go next. Like a compass sort of thing. Yeah, a comp not even a comp like you it's it's you you click in the stick and he'll put a hologram down on the ground and it'll point you in the direction you have to go. Like it'll I mean, track that, that. That's basically a compass, right? Well, like the compass, it doesn't just point you there. It literally it's a line that you follow. Oh okay. Yeah. Sorry. When you said like, arrow, I thought you meant like it just like no. pointed you in the right direction. Like it disappears after a bit, but you can also just open up your menu, your map, and it'll line it'll show you that line. Right. Okay. Like, that makes sense. And and it's just it's I like I'm running around from what I remember from the original Dead Space. The best weapon is the st- starting weapon. Like the best weapon you can get in that game is the 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 rivet gun. Um and I'd get a lot of ammo for that. I was running around at one point. I keep boosting and focusing on boosting anytime I get a chance to upgrade my weapons. I keep focusing on upgrading ammo capacity so that I could have more ammo and save inventory slots. But at one point, I was running around with, like, 300 ammo for my machine gun and, like, 60 shots for my rivet gun. And that was, like, taking up so many inventory slots. But I'm three hours in the game, and I have 18 inventory slots. That's six more. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's six more than what I had in Callisto Protocol by the end of the game. And there were times still by the end of the game I was dropping and getting rid of items because I didn't have the space to hold on to it, and I wanted to keep the sellable items so I could sell them because they're just not giving me stations to use, use my credits enough. Um, yeah, it's, I'm having a good time with dead space. It's incredibly more horror filled than I feel Callisto protocol was. Which I mean, and, and that's the thing that people always talk about with that game is like, it's legitimately like a creepy game and it keeps yeah. you on edge. Atmospherically creepy. Like Callisto protocol had some of the atmosphere, but like it didn't have the sound design. And that's where, like, 
Dead Space gets me. The sound design for the creepiness is fantastic. Fantastic. So have you have you only ever played the first Dead Space, or have you played all three? I have never. There's only two Dead Spaces. No, there's three. Is there a third Dead Space? Yep. Is there a Dead Space three? There is. I did not know that. Um, I actually, I remember. Uh, I I own Dead Space. Uh, one and two. Uh, oh yeah, there was a Dead Space three. I own Dead Space one and two on uh on Steam, and I never actually got around to playing them. I did have for a while on um uh what's it called on uh on on the Wii or Wii U they had the gun gun rail games for Dead Space. I have those. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I never I never played it, or I not I played that and I beat that. That was fun. But yeah, I've never actually. I think I started the original Dead Space once or twice, but I never actually like beat them and played them all the way through. Let's see, seven point eight hours into the original Dead Space is all I've got. I last played September twenty seventh, twenty twelve. So it's I like it's I probably while. I probably got about halfway through and then stopped for one reason or another. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like I I always had a fondness for this game, but like I watched Derek play it because. Back in the day, that's all I could do was watch Eric play all the video games because he always played all the video games and I never got a chance to. Right. Um, well, because you're bad at them. No, it's because he would get done his homework faster and then my parents would let him play and then I would get done my homework and have nothing else to do. So I'd just sit there and watch him play. Yeah, because he was better at them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was like I, I've played the original Dead Space. I've never played two or three. I've I obviously forgot that there was a third Dead Space. Um, There's also a puzzle game. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy it. And like that was the idea. Like If I were to beat Dead Space... If I were to get through these fast enough, I would have gone to Dead Space 2. Uh, but uh, that's not going to happen by the end of this month. No, uh, especially... That, it's probably for the best, too, because that's a very... Going, going that route of Dead Space Remake to Dead Space 2 is like a very... I imagine it's going to be jarring. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd figure it. I'd be... I'd, I will see, but like, also with timing and everything, I might beat Dead Space on Sunday. Probably not, because it's like a thirteen-hour game. It's longer than Callisto Protocol, and I didn't stream on Monday, so I'm already behind. But um, it is very possible that if I can't, I'm hoping to beat Dead Space by Tuesday, by Monday, so that on Tuesday the demo of Monster Hunter Wilds is available for anybody who has a PlayStation Plus account. So I'm going to jump into that demo, and then it becomes fully available. Or not demo, but beta test. Quote, beta test. And then it becomes fully available on Steam come that Thursday. So, But it's also, the event ends at the end of October, so if I beat Dead Space before, by Sunday, then Monday and Tuesday, it'll just be basic-ass horror games and not an alien-based horror game. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Monster Hunter is basically a horror game. Did, did you, mm, look, uh, what was his name? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let me let me get the image. Let me get the image. Uh, I have it saved on my phone, actually. Oh, and uh, just r- real quick, while you're looking for that, just to to circle back to New York Comic Con, um, they did have that big Monster Hunter booth, and I did not go anywhere near it. That picture was the closest thing I took of it. Yeah, I know. Uh, but it had some sort of weird monster that you could go sit on and get a picture taken. Um, so I sent a message to the chat of the Discord. I say it. Look at that fucking monstrosity. Yeah, that thing looks like some sort of, like, tumor. Yeah, it's got, it's, so this is, the, for anybody listening, it's uh, a a monster they announced today, Rompopolo, Rompopolo, um, it's, it's a brute wyvern, so, Cobb, that doesn't mean anything to you, but a brute wyvern, they're like T-Rexes, they're bigger, two-handed uh, dinosaur type monsters. bipedal. Yeah, well, you can't you can't identify them specifically bipedal because there's there's brute and then there's bird. So bird are like raptors, and then which brute are, are also bipedal. Yeah, so that's why it's like you can you, you the best way like the brute bird are smaller brutes basically, but brutes are like taller, the bigger, they're more like T Rex size, like mostly yeah, mostly T Rex size. T- stuff. So this is one of those guys. He's got like a blade on his back. He's got claws for arms, and he has the face of a fucking mosquito. And I hate it. It's so disgusting. Um, and it like it lives in a it, in the image I shared. It says brute wyvern, 
can be found in areas of deep oil slit. So it's within oil, and it makes the oil explode and stuff, and it's disgusting. It is horror-filled monster. I don't like it. And you'll have to fight it 30 times to get its armor. Most likely, depending on what its armor set is going to be like and what its blades are going to look like. I still haven't decided what weapon I'm going to main this time. They let you bring two weapons out on field this time. So yeah, that's 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 a big decision i got to figure out. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. But anything else about Callisto Protocol or Dead Space? No, no, nothing, nothing really. If you like horror games, you might like Callisto Protocol. Just know that it's not... Sur- it's, it is survival horror in a sense of limited inventory space and, ho- and, and scary elements, not survival horror in a sense that it's very linear and straightforward. There's not a lot of back... There's no backtracking in that game. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Nice. Well, tell me about this uh, Critical Role thing. So, everyone, Critical Role is celebrating their 10th anniversary. So they've been on the internet as of... For 10 years as of, like, I think May 2025. Um, something like that. So they're doing a world tour. They're ha- they have a show in Australia. No, two shows in Australia. Um, and then the other three are in the States, I believe. I can't remember. Um, most of them are just, they, they didn't really go into much detail. They're just one shots. One of them is going to be them playing their first ever game of Dagger Heart in the world of Exandria, which is the world, the primary world that they play critical role in that they play D&D in. This is kind of feeding sort of the uh, fan theories that once this campaign's over, they're not doing D&D anymore. They're going to be doing Daggerheart. We'll see if that's actually true or not. I mean, it would make sense. Why wouldn't they use their own thing, right? It, especially since Wizards is being a dick about allowing people to use their stuff sometimes. Um, I, know, I know a good number of podcasts. There's a, a, a podcast that I listen to, uh, Dark... Dark Dungeon, Dark Dice, something like that. It was the one that um, Jeff Goldblum was on. Uh, they do not use terms that D and D that are D and D related, like even even like races and stuff, because like wizards can suck about allowing people to use this. Yeah, like all all of their like terms of service and stuff are pretty yeah. shitty, and especially since the whole like not not crediting creators or whatever it was that happened. Uh, Last year, like, it's just people are trying to step away from Wizards, which I get it. Like, I, I would still play D&D, but I get have, being like, I don't know if I can do D&D for uh, uh, content anymore. I get it. And, Wizards- like, and, and it's different, I feel like, if you're making content and there's some sort of, like, um revenue stream, then it's yeah. like, okay, you can reasonably afford to replace all of your shit. Yeah. Like, if you're playing for fun, like, with your friends, like those books and stuff are expensive. It is not a quick thing to just be like, all right, yeah. everyone go buy this other set of everything. Yeah. That's, and that's my problem with D and D. We didn't really, we haven't really touched on this, but they basically just recently released or are releasing 5.5. Yeah. Isn't the, it? It's not even called 5.5 though, right? It's is one D and D or something like that, but it's yeah, basically like D&D one. Yeah. Like they are, they are, it's not a new edition. It is fifth edition. But they are changing up a lot of stuff about it. They're changing up how classes work, how spells, certain spells work, and things like that. And it's like, I don't, I don't have that kind of money to yeah. buy this new content. And They're, if I wanted to do like an Adventures League kind of shit, I'm gonna need to learn that. If I yeah, want to go play with other people that aren't my friends, ch- they actually pulled a bunch of like the content like out of it technically too. Like yeah. it's still it's still valid content. But like I have the um the D and D Beyond app. If you go in to look at like the character creator, all the stuff that you're familiar with is considered legacy now. There's only yeah. like five cl- five races now, I think. Yeah, because they they're read, which I think is absolute horseshit. Like, th- just make it a new edition. Just make it a new edition. If you're gonna do it this bad, it's a new edition. It's not half. It's not like an upgrade. It's not an update. Like, don't treat a tabletop pen and paper game as an online RPG that you can just update. Yeah. Because that's costing your fans more money that, frankly, they probably don't have. They're playing a D&D game. They're playing D&D. That, it's not a cheap hobby, but it's also not an expensive hobby, depending on when you get in. If you get in on the ground floor of the edition and get a $50, $50 book once a year, that's fine. But And even then, like depending on, on what you're doing, like if you're just playing, you only need the player's handbook. Yeah. 
Yeah, you only need the handbook that's relevant to your character. So if you're playing a character that has a subclass based off of a different book, and you have that book, then great, that's all you need. But yeah, it's it's frustrating. So um, that's that's one of the many fan theories that are out there right now. Uh, but currently in D and D, here's where the spoilers are going to get into. So if you listen, if you if for Critical Role at least, uh, spoilers for Critical Role if you care. Uh, currently on Critical Role, as of the episode that aired on what was last Thursday, the seventeenth, the the uh, the main cast, which are Bell's Hells, are on the moon with the um, team from Campaign Two, the Mighty Nine. Uh, the, and what has been what is being set up is that Vox Machina, the team from Campaign One, is going and fighting one area of Big Bad. Uh, the Mighty Nine is going off and fighting another Big Bad that's on the moon. So Vox Machina is on Exandria, their home planet. Mighty Nine and Bell's Hells are on the moon. Bell's Hel- uh, Mighty Nine is going to go fight one enemy, and the Mighty Nine or the Bell's Hells are going to go fight the other. So. They, he's breaking up the group into three. Now, it's such a big event that's going to happen in this world. I, for as a, in a DM stand, standpoint, would not put this all up to chance. And would not put this all up to, what do I want to have happen? This is something that, like, I wouldn't roll the dice to see if Vox Machina, the team that everyone started watching Critical Role with, I wouldn't roll the dice just to see if they would win. Same with whatever Mighty Nine is doing. And obviously whatever Bell's House is doing. So my theory, currently, my running theory, is they are go- he is going to have them cross over and play as Vox Machina during their uh, thing, play as the Mighty Nine during their fight, and play as Bell's Hells during their fight. My theory comes to this because since Mighty Nine and Bell's Hells are together on the moon, the players are playing both characters. Wait, they're, they're like that's right now that's what's happening? Currently, right now, players are playing both characters. So, Lara Bailey is playing both Jester from Mighty Nine and Imogen from Bell's Hells. And everyone who has a character from both campaigns is playing both characters. How and big of a... I'm sorry, how big of a time gap was there between... Uh, um, 20... So, it's been... I think it was... It's either 10 or 20 years. I think it was 10 years from Mighty Nine to uh bell's hells and i think it was 20 years from vox machina to mighty nine so it's been about 30 or 40 years something like that from vox machina to now okay okay because i remember when um when they first started this one and travis was playing the the uh bertrand bell um his character was one that originated with vox machina yeah his character old man at that at this point yeah, and in the mighty, and even with Vox Machina, he was like in his forties or fifties uh, when he was in Vox Machina, because he was introduced as a character during the uh, search for Grog one shot, where uh, Grog's soul was captured because he gra- pulled a card from the deck of many things. Right, I remember you talking about that before. Yeah, it's great. It's a great one shot. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, so like my ass- assumption at this point. Because of how he just played the past game, this past game, and we'll see how things happen in the next episode. When they split off, and then the assault happens down on Exandria, and the fights happen on these two planets, the the players are going to take over each of their characters. Now, one of the um, anniversary or uh, uh, one shots, the one in October in New York at Radio City Music Hall, one year from now, is the wedding of Jester and Ford, which canonically has not happened yet because they have mentioned it in the show that it has not happened. They got engaged, quote, en- they got engaged during their live show in London earlier this year, which that live show took place about two weeks prior to the current events. Oh, so they've been dipping back into the Mighty Nine like a bunch over the past year. I mean, they did that with uh, Vox Machina as well. With the Mighty Nine out, they had a few one shots. They did the wedding episode for uh, Percy and um, and Vexalia as well. They did a wedding. They did the wedding one shot. Like they did the they did the search for Grog. They did the return home one shot, and then they did the wedding one shot for those three, or for uh, for Vox Machina while still doing the Mighty Nine. 
so yeah, they'll they step they'll dive back when they can. They couldn't do as many like live shows and whatnot during COVID because right. nothing was open. But like they would have done more if they could. And like the the live show they did in London was a live show for the Mighty Nine. Uh the the next the live show in in Camden is actually uh they're playing their Dagger Heart. It's the final dagger it's the final Dagger Heart stream before its official release. Uh, I really want to go to that. I'm probably going to go to that. Did you get tickets uh, yet? Not yet. They're still available, but it's expensive. Um, I kind of don't want to go alone, but I don't want to pay $400 for two tickets for something somebody doesn't really want to go to. So uh, I'll probably end up going alone. Um, uh, I, I have a feeling it's called Christmas, which when they were at Geek and Sundry, every people would send them free shit when they were at Geek and Sundry. And every once in a while, they would do like a Christmas special, and they would open up all of their gifts and packaging that people would send them, and they would get a ton of shit. So, well, like, I remember I, you having us watch that one too? Yeah, they they, they had the Nightmare Before Christmas, which was uh, he did Nightmare Before Christmas as a one shot, which was fantastic. Um, but yeah, so yo fuck like, these tickets ain't cheap. No, they're not. They're not two two hundred dollars for one ticket. It's it's insane. It's insane how expensive these tickets are. So if if you go, there is front row of the like two hundred section. Um, only a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I don't know how much longer that's going to be available, and I have to pull the trigger if I'm going to go or not. Like honestly, I might just buy two tickets and see if somebody wants to go with me. If they it, weren't so expensive, I was going to say I'll go with you. Yeah. I don't know that I can justify almost two hundred dollars for. Yeah. For something that like I just don't follow that much because I, I do like it like it's not like I dislike that stuff yeah um but like that's a lot of money it's a lot of money uh so one year from now they are doing the wedding of Jester and Ford what if they die that's my question what if they die what if there's a TPK for the Mighty Nine like what is their can they, how how I think it's very bold of them to assume that this team is going to survive unless they either a have already filmed everything and know what's going to happen or B they are not going to be taking control. The players are not going to be taking control of the characters during their fights, which in both a, a fan of D and D and a fan of the show, I think that would be incredibly disappointing because I want to know how, what happens with everything. You're building up to this big event, this all out war to save Exandria. And we only get to see one part of it in a in a standpoint of entertainment. Like, look, I understand because I try to make this argument all the time with Critical Role. Stop criticizing how they play because it's just a bunch of people playing D&D. If you don't like how an episode was because somebody did a thing that you wouldn't have done, well, fuck you. That's I mean, they're yes, pl- they're just people playing D&D. If you don't like how an episode was because of like mechanics of D&D. Well, and that's just that's the like you cannot like the show because you don't like D&D, but to not like the show because somebody made a decision that you didn't agree with is is like I I like there's a, there's a level of remember these are just people having fun. These are just people playing D&D. Play D&D like the show is about playing D&D first and then entertainment second. So yeah. I totally totally understand or that's how the show should be. So I totally understand where it's like Matt would be like, all right, well, you're just the the Bell's Hells, so you're just going to see the Bell's Hell stuff. But I want to, in a level of entertainment and in a level of like, you know, as a D&D player, I would want to be involved in these events, in all of these events. I wouldn't want to leave this stuff up to chance. I would want to know what happens with all of this. I feel like it would be more satisfying to experience Vox Machina going and rescuing Vax and and destroying the Malleus Key, experiencing the Mighty Nine go and defeating the 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 I can't remember the name of the enemies they're going to fight because it's some ridiculous name, uh, but defeating that council of psychic entities and it would be amazing to watch Bell's Hells go and fight Ludinus Delef and whatever they decide to end the series in like. It like that's it really is what they're building up to, but I just find it crazy. Like, what is your contingency plan? If there's, a, is there going to be a TPK? Do you have everything recorded already? Which I doubt you do, because they do still do pre-recorded, but they do pre-recorded as of like 
an hour before the show airs is when they start recording. Well, then it's not really pre-recorded. It's not really pre-recorded, but it's like there's an hour delay. So like, so, but I mean, sometimes they are, they do record like a week a week or two ahead. Sometimes like they're not that far ahead of recording. Yeah. Generally, I, like if because they're all busy people, adults and entertainers, and they're running a company, they might record that Thursday before the show, like the full episode, and then air it before the show. Like the show does get edited down some, especially with some of Sam's bits for his uh for his ad reads. So. Like, well, and you okay. can tell that those things are filmed separately. Yeah, some, they, 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 sometimes they are. So, like, what if the Mighty Nine die? Like, that's my, that's my, like, real question or discussion topic. Like, what if the Mighty Nine die? What is their plan? They are building this one shot. They are building this event. They're ten, they're ma- their biggest, probably not their biggest, but probably their biggest, because Radio City Music Hall, it is a... It's a big venue. It's a big venue. They're building this on the fact that the are expecting these characters to still be alive in in three days game time, a year, hour time. What if they die? What well, are you going to do? I mean, at that point, they, they do have time to pivot. So, like, they don't True. have to do the wedding episode. Sure. I mean, they could do, like, an alternate reality sort of wedding episode where it's like, hey, this isn't actually canon anymore because, as no. you all know, these characters are dead. Uh, I... I have viewpoints on alternate reality as well. Have you watched uh, Legends of Fox, Fox Machina season three yet? I haven't watched anything past season one. Okay. Um, do you care if I get into spoilers about that? Nah, not really. Okay. So spoilers for Legends of Fox, Legends of Fox Machina. Um, Percy never fully died in Vox Machina, but he did in Legends of Vox Machina. And I don't know how I feel about this because... Like, then that means that because we know they're getting a Mighty Nine series, so they're most likely going to get a Bell's Hell series, which means we're going to see this crossover event happen in the future as an animated series. How are they going to put this all together without, like, a main fucking character? Now, they still have three more episodes left, which air tomorrow. Wait, so, so, so like, they killed the character Percy in the cartoon they, and, like, he's not, they didn't bring him back or anything? Correct. So in the show, he dies but they're able to resurrect him. They did not do that in the show. Like they he dies in the show similar to how he dies in the in the in the car, in the in the game, but they never actually brought him back fully. They didn't I mean, bring are, him back in the show. Do we know that that's not like a season 4 thing? It's it should have happened immediately if they were following the actual timeline of events. But I mean it, like they're they're going to like change things up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, true. They're going to and I, I like I like I I understand that, but like a major character death to then not bring the character back right away is a little bit is a little tricky because I mean yes there is revivify only works within the first minute resurrect um or was it revive no Re- what is it there's three resurrection spells revivify works is a field medic it works within a minute. Then resurrection, I believe, you have to have the body, which they do, and it can work only for like a few months or something like that. I can't remember. I have to look this up now. But also, like, keep in mind, like, while the while the animated series does try to follow like D and D lore rule sort of thing, it it isn't D and D, so they can change how things work and. They, they could write an entire season four quest of them trying to bring him back. Yeah, like, I mean, season season four could be nothing but them searching for his soul. No, that's 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 a thing. Like, I fully expect season four. To, well, no, I mean, I wasn't expecting Chroma Conclave to be two seasons. I was expecting that only to be one, really, and they turned it into two. Because you have to remember, um, like, they don't have full control over that side of it. Like, Amazon is going to be dictating some of it and well, if they want them no. to stretch things out they're going to stretch things out yeah i mean season four is going to be uh the vecna season um and how how much of vecna oh but cool also, things crossover but also um like there is stuff that happens between the chroma conclave and uh the vecna stuff that is kind of important to the character development so who knows how they'll do that but yeah so there's um in D D, there's revivify which happens within a minute Ray's dead um which is 10 days reincarnate which is 10 days um and raise dead you need the body reincarnate you 
don't and they there's a chance that they they may change their body may change because it's reincarnation like they fully bring them back in a different body uh resurrection is 100 years true resurrection is 200 years and wish is just basically you can copy any of those spells um so there's they have plenty of ways to bring they, them back. They have plenty of ways, but it's still like I think it I, I don't know, it was just it was it's it's weird. And I really hope they at least maybe bring him back before the end of the season. If they're going to bring him back, they need to bring him back before season 4 in my opinion. But they only have 3 episodes left this season, so who knows. But they're again, not... you don't really know what season 4 is going to be. You have speculation based on the the game. Based on knowing the game. And like yeah, I don't know. It just it felt because that's also like that is a big character point in the characters with Vexalia and Percy being together and, and being, and then getting married, having kids like that is, that is like major to their story and major to characters themselves in an overall world development. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. This, I, I'll have more to talk about that next week when I watch the final episodes. Um, but yeah, it's just to me right now, I'm like, I'm still just I'm I'm holding on to what happens if they die. Like I I tweeted this and obviously I don't have Twitter blue so uh, no one saw it. Um like all my tweets. Um but I tweeted about it. I'm like what happens? Like let me don't get me wrong. The most recent episode of of Critical Role is fantastic cuz everyone is playing their own characters and Sam Regal like I didn't know that you could masturbate on Twitch. Uh, that's basically what Sam Regal was doing, was having his character from Campaign 2 flirting and trying to hook up with his character from the current campaign. <laughs> and it was just like, well, Twitch allowed masturbation. That's interesting. Uh, it's, it was great. It was uh, it was an episode that, like, over the course of four hours, literally took four hours of the game world. Like, that was, it was just them getting the giggles out about having the, fa- being, with, about the fact that they're going to be controlling two characters for a short while. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I'm just like, I'm like, I really, I, I don't want to say I want to see the characters die, but I kind of want to see the characters die to see like the panic in their eyes or to see what they decided to do. Like, yes, it's a year away. They've got time to plan and change it up. But like, what would it be? What would they do? Or, or would just, they just kill off the characters that are getting married? Yeah. Like, and, and like, that's the thing. Like they're billing it like they, in their video, they're like, this is the wedding for Ford and Jester. But they also... I know they filmed that before they knew they were taking control of the characters. So they probably decided that, or Marissa, uh, uh, Marisha probably decided this is what the one shot will be before she knew that, like, oh, we're probably going to be taking control of our characters. There's a chance they could die. Yeah. yeah I, guess, I guess you'll have to just keep watching to find out. I mean, yeah, like, that's the thing. This campaign's almost over. I see it going probably until May um, at the latest uh it's over I, with six months to go but remember that's only three weeks each month that's still a lot of episodes because yes it's three weeks each, each month for four hours a week yeah but it's only 18 episodes like it's 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 not that, like it's almost over in in a sense that like they they're over they're beyond 100 episodes like they're oh they're like 110 now or something like that their 100th episode wasn't even a bell's hell's episode it was during their event with brennan lee mulligan oh that's funny yeah but yeah Um, but even then like 18 episodes is still what 70 hours yeah yeah but in dnd time that's like nothing i don't know man that that seems like a lot that is going to be just several days in game time which is fine i'm just saying like like, because like that that's what it is is they are at the end of this episode they were going to sleep to go towards the bbegs tomorrow the next day so this episode that uh, well no today is no are they i can't remember if they take off the fourth thursday or the last thursday um so they might be airing tomorrow they won't be airing next thursday and then also they usually take off both thanksgiving and the following thursday and then they usually take off around christmas on top of the like the last Thursday stuff, so right they they might be they might they, they might not have a new episode until January after or after Thanksgiving. Sometimes I think that they might have done that before. So like yeah, they're almost done, but yeah, it's May or sooner, probably March at the earliest. I well, see, see now, just, now you're just making shit up. You don't know. No, it's it, like it, it. 
it there's really only so much they can do with like and that's why I think they're going to be crossing over and having each of the other teams be controlled by the players as well. Because it's like, okay, we're going to go and we have our main team that's this season going after one BBEG, which like all they have to do is get to him. That's all they have to do now is get to him. They're on the moon. They're ready to fight him. They just have to get to him. And it's going to be next to impossible for them to like not get to him. Um and then same with the Mighty Nine, same with, like, Vox Machina is probably the one that would be more likely to take a little bit of time because they're trying to destroy a big machine. So, I don't know. It's 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 exciting. It is very exciting. I, I look forward to watching it every Monday. And past few Mondays, I've actually started stream late because I was stuck watching it, and I wanted <laughs> to finish it before. Because, like, it, they, it doesn't air on, on YouTube until 3 o'clock. And like you said, oh, I didn't realize that. I I forgot that it like they yeah. have that weird staggered release for it. Yeah, so it's like four or five, or so, and usually it's like anywhere between three to five hours. So like you watch so, it at two times speed. No, no, no. I mean, the only the only thing I do about skipping anything is I skip the fifteen minute prologue or this fifteen minute in, um um break, break in the middle. That, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, understandably. Yeah. Uh, um, anything else about Critical Role you want to talk about though? No. I do have one fun, silly question that we, okay. and it's not critical role based. Um, Drew, I know you listen to episodes you're not on. Not always. But if you're listening to this one, stop listening now. Thoughts on Drew's reaction to the movie next week? I think he is going to not like it because he doesn't like movies, but I think he is going <laughs> to be a little more appreciative of it than some of the other ones. Like, I think he's going to come back with a, this was fine. I appreciate that. It went heavy with these tropes and then said, no, 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 we're just kidding. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking that I was like, I was like, I think he's going to he's go stop. I, I think he's going to be like, OK, I'm I'm happy that like he's going to be mad at first because it is incredibly tropey for a horror movie. But then when he finds out what it is, he's going to be he's it's going to take him for a, a bit of a spin. And yeah, he. Yeah. The only thing I can think is because we did say that we thought he might like that one because it like circumvents some stuff. He might go into it like a little more suspecting and not get hit by the twist as much. Mm -hmm. Not that that's going to make him like, oh, this movie sucked. I saw, I saw it was coming, but it just might not give him as much of a like, oh, OK, that actually wasn't bad because of the things they did. It's like, OK, yeah, no, it did the thing differently. I expected that based on what you guys said. So, yeah. But yeah, I am curious to see what his uh, what his reaction is. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to rewatch it. Oh my god, I have to figure out when I'm going to have time to watch a movie. We have watched, I think, 20, 19 movies so far for October. We definitely missed a couple. You're four. You're four behind, man. Come on now. Well, we 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 traveled for four days. Well, you could have watched them while traveling. You were on a plane. You know, we so we actually did think about that. Um. American Airlines no longer puts TVs in their seats. You have iPads or tablets? Neither. So I brought my my tablet. Erica did not bring hers. You could have connected your headsets. Um, sure we, sure. we sat across the aisle from each other. Wow. Wow. Could have hung yeah. it up in the aisle and let everyone else watch it too. <laughs> no, I have to say, though, doing the like like two aisle seats, great way to great way to go because then you both get an aisle seat. Mm -hmm. Um. And you at least have a little bit of space. Yeah. As opposed to like one person being stuck in the middle with a stranger on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, we just, we were out so much. Like every time we got back to the hotel, we, we just collapsed. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're hoping maybe like Saturday night to like watch a couple, like, like a couple of nights. We, well, like we have made up some ground by like watching like two movies, like a night on a couple of nights. It all just depends on what we watch and what time we start. Like, if it's a two-hour movie and we don't start till seven, we're not watching two movies. But if we start at, like, six and we watch two, like, 90-minute movies, we can, like, that works out fine. You gotta, you gotta get 31 movies in 31 days, man. You gotta do it. We're close. We're close. Watch more movies than you have, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have, I'm going to be basically out every day this weekend besides Sunday, but I have to do a lot of it. Well, no, I took off tomorrow so I can do editing and recording and whatnot tomorrow. So I don't have to worry about that shit. Yeah, I mean, but, we're actually busy all weekend, too. So it's going to be like squeezing in movies where we can. Yeah. But I think that will probably do it for tonight. Yeah. Because I'm going to go watch a movie now. Good luck. 
Thank you. Uh, but with that said, if you would like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. Or, if you are so kind and generous, you can support us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Whoopal Podcast, YouTube, Spotify. Find us there, rate us, review us, subscribe to us. All of it helps. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo. You can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. Now, Rich, what is your streaming schedule? Twitch.tv slash B underscore one. That's where I video game stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Um, I'm playing Dead Space until I beat it. And then uh, once I do beat that, uh, it'll be the end of October, and we will be out of Alien uh alien alien october so we'll be getting back into resident evil hardcore with um claire's story and then uh we'll be doing i'll be doing bonus streams next weekend to do monster hunter uh wilds uh open beta and yeah come check me out nice and with that we will be back next week with something else to talk about thanks for listening bye see yous